take complete control. In Jesus' mighty and mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Jesus. And the first lesson today is taken from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 32, verses 1 to 20, the whole chapter. This chapter is a prophetic chapter that speaks to the advent of Jesus Christ our Lord and also to the judgment that is coming from people who are complacent in their work with God. It also talks of the power of the Holy Spirit to rejuvenate and to revive our lives when He appears on us. It says, side by side, Behold, the King shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. What king is he required to hear if not by the Lord Jesus Christ? He said, A king is coming who shall reign in righteousness. And princes shall rule in judgment. Meaning that when he comes, he will rule in righteousness. And that is exactly what happened. This was a prophetic passage spoken by Prophet Isaiah before the Lord Jesus Christ came to the earth. He said, This king shall reign in righteousness. We know Jesus Christ, our Lord, was completely righteous and holy. And with that holiness, he wrote that when that happens, a man shall leave a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the tempest. In other words, there should be protection. When this man comes, this man of righteousness, when he appears on the scene, then you can hide under him. He will be a cover from the tempests, the storms of life. You can only find refuge in this man, Christ. That's what he's saying. And he says, rivers of water in a dry place. That is, you will find sustenance where you are expanding your life when you come to Jesus Christ. So it's the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. These are all things that it is. And that you can find when you come to Jesus. It shall be covered in the tempest. Are you troubled right now by the storms of this world? Are you tempted left, right, and center? Jesus Christ is waiting. He says in Matthew 11, 30, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and love of me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my body is light. So, this statement tells us what he is going to do, and he also confirms it. And it says, The eyes of them that see shall not be dim, the ears of them that hear shall hearken, the heart also will be rash, shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerer shall be ready to speak them. In other words, whatever is crooked, in your life will be repaired and restored when you come to Jesus. Are you right now troubled? Are you tormented? Is there a need in your life that you've tried everything to fulfill without success? Jesus is telling you today, I am waiting for you. If only you can come to me and surrender and worship me, then I would totally transform your life. That the stammerers are ready to speak plainly. The normal stammer, the old that the blind will see, and the hand of the rash shall understand knowledge. God shall give you that knowledge that you require. Right now, maybe you don't know which direction to take, where to turn in your life. If you come to Jesus, He will give you that direction. And He says, The bad person shall be no more all liberal, nor the child the multiple. In other words, there will be no more foolishness. Most people, they will receive correct knowledge to do what is right. And it continues that there come a time to the instruments of the child are evil, the devices to wicked, devices to destroy the poor, the lying words, even when the living speak at right. But the liberal devices evil things, and the liberal things that these times. So he's saying that at the same time as people are receiving their salvation. That the others will continue 
the weekends. This is exactly what we find happening in the world today. There are revivals going on people are being saved, but at the same time, the wicked are coming more and more wicked. And it continues, verse 9, to rise up, you women that are at ease, hear the voice, be careless, brothers, give the act of speech. What did he mean by you women that are at ease? He's referring to those people that are complacent, that are satisfied with their lives, that are no longer hungry for the things of God, they feel they have everything already, and that they feel they have everything already, and they don't pray, they don't bother to read the word of God, they are okay. Let's speak your own mind. Um, yes, they feel they are okay. He's referring to people like that. Are you in that kind of states? Are you in that kind of states? Then you're complacent with your life, you don't feel you need to go to church, you don't feel you need to pray, you don't feel you need anything from God, you have enough money. This message is for you. Because if you're in that state, then there is a problem. There is a problem. It says, many days and years shall be the trouble of you careless women, for the vintage shall fail and the harvest, the gathering shall not come. Because the, of the fact that they are relied on their own efforts, they are no longer concerned, they will stop the flow of blessings of God in their lives. So tremble ye women that are at ease. They shall lament for the teeth for the pleasant field for the food provided. Upon the land of my people shall come of comfort and bread. You see? Instead of harvest and fruitfulness, there are comfort and bread. And it's pain. Amos 6, chapter 1. The book of Amos 6, chapter 1. Upon the land of my people shall come of comfort and bread. Yea, upon all the house of joy in your city. Because the palaces shall be forsaken. The motto of the city shall be left, the first and towers of the dead forever. What he's saying is that if you are complacent, you don't pray, you don't attend church, you don't read the Bible, what will happen? Sooner or later, trouble will come to your life. Because Satan will try and bring you down. If you don't pray, there's no one of protection around you. Satan will always get to come and attack you. If there's anything you're doing now to maintain it, you need to pray about it. You need to fast, you need to read the word of God, you need to keep a close watch. It's just like you, you uh, built a garden. If you don't watch another garden, what will happen? Weeds will come, they will take over the garden. Before you know it, you won't even see any fruits anymore. So there's something called maintenance, spiritual maintenance, just like you maintain your car. You take your car for services every so often. Check the tires, check the brakes. The same thing spiritually you need to do. But if you say, oh, I don't care, my care is all right, well, very soon the car will break down, the tires will break down, and you have to have a major repair. That's exactly what's required to do. Amos 6, chapter 1, please, somebody. The book of Amos 6, chapter 1. Can I reduce my mic? Uh huh. What to them that are in Zion? And trust the man of Samaria. Yes. See, you want to them because they are ease. They trust the other things apart from God. They feel they are comfortable. They don't need God. Have enough money. Why do I need to go to church? They feel that people go to church are just. You know, weak. Well, there are waiting time going to happen because destruction will come upon them sooner or later. And just of this judgment coming, I says, until the spirit is poured from the from high. In other words, all this trouble will come until the spirit of God is poured. You know, the spirit of God is like water is poured upon the from high. And the wilderness, when that happens, what will happen? Wilderness will become a fruitful field and the fruitful field will be the forests. That will have the multiplication, increased blessings that come from the form of the Holy Spirit. Have you had the Holy Spirit be born for your life in the next question? Because if you haven't, your life will be diminished, barren, 
But what will still come is that the fruitfulness, power, blessings, progress, those are the days that will come the born of the Holy Spirit in your life. You see, how do I receive the Holy Spirit? First of all, you have to be born again. Then, the Holy Spirit will come inside your heart. And after that, you will need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it's so completely the Holy Spirit. With the manifestation of speaking in tongues. So that is the entrance of the Holy Spirit when you are born again and the baptism of the Holy Spirit afterwards. So I want to call us time. So I want to call us time. So I want to call us time. That says, I want to call us time. It says, Thou sendest for the Spirit, they are created, and thou removest the face of the heart. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of rejuvenation and renewal. He will renew your life. Where there is dryness, he will bring multiplication, he will bring fruitfulness, he will give you power. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He talks of common enjoyment, he says, The work of righteousness and peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Maybe in your life you are not have any peace right now. The Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace for the wicked. If you are full of wickedness, you are full of evil things, you won't have any peace. But if your life is righteous, if your life is righteous, you will have peace. Because if you are righteous, you will that you obey the laws. You know, if you are, so why are you driving and you are speeding, then you are very afraid that you're going to be the ticket or that you'll be stuck, right? But if you're keeping the within the normal speed you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about getting a ticket or being stopped by a police officer. So the work of righteousness is when your life is righteous, when you're living a life on the dictates of the Bible or the word of God, you have peace. Luke 2 14, Luke 2 14, Michael 4 1 5. And the effect of righteousness. Why is the assurance forever? Those who violate the laws of God never have peace in their lives. It says, so Luke 2 14, Micah 4 1 5. Yes. 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 Glory to God. Peace. So that peace comes from Jesus Christ. He is the one that gives peace. He is the Prince of Peace. You cannot find peace elsewhere. Maybe you've tried so many things. Some of you have joined calls, you've joined all kinds of groups, you've attended parties, you've tried associations, all kinds of groups, just to find peace. But at the end, you still find empty, emptiness in your heart. Only Jesus can fill that void in your heart. So many people, they spend a lot of money, they go for shopping, they buy clothes, they travel, they do all kinds of things, they join clubs. Because they are looking for peace. They don't realize it. Really, they are looking for Jesus. Until they find Jesus, they will not have a peace. They spend thousands of dollars buying clothing, going to attend events, traveling. But when they come back, they are just as empty as when they left. Because only Jesus can fulfill and fill that emptiness in your life. Only He can give you that peace. So if you are looking for peace, if you are looking for contentment, if you are looking for joy, the joy of the Lord, only Jesus can give it to you. So receive him today, and he will grant you that peace you are looking for. In other places, you are not doing that Jesus the one can fill it. A second passage is taken from Acts chapter 5, the Acts of the Apostles chapter 5, verse 16. And he says, a certain man named Ananias, with Sapphira's wife, sold a possession. He didn't tell us what he sold, but he sold something. And they kept back part of the price. His wife being aware of it, and bought a certain part and laid it at the feet. What was happening was that this was the middle of the church, and people were selling what they had, had and bringing the, the resources to. The apostles so they distribute it to everybody. Now, was nobody claimed ownership of anything. We go to the last two, uh, three verses. 
uh, Acts chapter 4, 7 verse 34. So neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought the price of things that were sold. And laid them down at the apostles' feet, and description was made of every man according to their need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was named, named Barnabas, having land sold it and brought the money and laid there at the apostles' feet. Wouldn't that be nice if that happened in the church again? Everybody's selling what they have and bringing the money to the leaders. It was like a community, everybody lived in the same place, ate at the same time. It was a community of people. So this man, Ernest and Sapphira, did the same thing, but he kept back part of the money. He kept back part of the money. This is a big problem we are allowed to take. We want the glory to be said, oh, Mr. Ananias and Mrs. Uh, Sapphira, they have, they have come to give us this money which they got from selling the land. But they did not want to, they didn't want to pay the full price of the glory. You see, there is no glory without the price. Many of us will want the glory, the fame, the success, but we're not ready to pay the price. We are looking for shortcuts. This is why people go to get powers from the married kingdom, because they want a big church or whatever, but they're not ready to pay the price. They want people to fill the church in one day. They want powers of prophecy, powers of prophesy and cast out demons, but they're not ready to pay the price of holiness. So they go and get the price. They go and get the short and some powers from, from the married kingdom. You see? This is a big problem today. Oh, this is also an evangelist, prophet, so and so. But they are not using those powers. So this man, he wanted the glory to be named among those who sold their property and brought their bodies to the apostles, but he was not ready to pay the full price. He kept back part of the money. This is very common in the church. I see people doing all kinds of things to be called. Of names, but at the end, they are not paying the full price. They are hiding something. So he came back on the price, his wife, a widow of this, and came and he gave it to Peter. So Peter said, and asked, Why has Satan filled the heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? How did Peter know that? It's through the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge. Peter, of course, was the leader also. And when that man brought that money, God told him that this is not the full price. How many of us bring things to church which are not what we actually need them to be? You know, this man, he knew he wasn't the full price, but he, he came, he gave it to a person Peter saying that this is the full price. Now Peter told him, and as much as fill your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back on the price of the man. Peter told him straight away why he was lying. So now it was, it's not me who lies to the Holy Ghost. How many of you bring things to the church and tell the pastor this is what I wrote for it when in fact it's not? In the book of Malachi, it talks of the people who brought diseased animals to God to give it as an offering, and God revealed them. Let's even go there. Book of uh, Malachi. He said, when your master receive this, you bring, bring these animals to me as your God. You cannot bring them to even earthly masters. God knows everything that about us. You cannot hide from God. And if God was to join the church today, thousands will perish because thousands have deceived themselves, not God. They deceive themselves. They bring things to God they knew were not correct. Uh, Malachi chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. I'm going to read it. Malachi chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. He said, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Say the Lord of hosts, O priest that is by thy name. And you say, Where are you going to despise your name? And yet you offer polluted bread for my altar, 
and you see where you have to be taken, and that you say the table of God is contentable. And if you offer the money, sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the name and sin, is it not evil? Offer it now to your Lord. Will you be pleased with this? Or accept that person? Say the Lord of hosts. See? They were bringing these animals to God. And God said, You cannot even do this to your God. Yet we are to a creator. Somebody will take your life to your minutes. So, this is a problem that he has. We want the glory, but we're not ready to pay the price. There is no true glory without the full price. And he told him, he said, You have lied to the Holy Ghost, and you have not lied to men, but to God. And when the man cried, he fell down and died, and grieved the air fell upon the people. This is a steep lesson. To all the people who want to lie to God. He cost and realized his life. If people do not repent, they will suffer a big, big problem. That's exactly what happened in this case. Now, imagine that happened today. The whole world would say, Oh, this man died inside the prison. God killed him inside the church. I think the Roman held his skeleton. The father and the priest are not lying to God. And they took up his body. And buried him, and in a few hours, his wife came in and asked him, and asked him, Is this the price you saw for this land? And the wife, not knowing what had happened to her husband, said yes, for so much. And he said, How is that? You have agreed to attempt the scream of the law. They were attempting to scream of the law because they were saying that maybe God didn't know what they were doing. You see? Where the spirit of God is, you cannot do that because God is on the science. What you are thinking in your heart, God knows it. <coughs> you cannot deceive it. God is aware of it. God is. <coughs> so the wife also agreed to deceive the Holy Ghost and she also died and suffered a terrible penalty. Number one, <coughs> somebody told her not to. So she was crying. There was a great fear came upon all the people. As many as had these things. If it was going to happen in the church like that, right now, many, many would be crying dead because many people come to church. They give the wrong offerings to God, and if God was to confront them, many would suffer the same fate. So you and I need to learn to speak the truth and be open to God if you are not paid. And that's what Peter asked that man said, look, when you had this property it was yours, and when you sold it, the money was yours. Because nobody compelled you <coughs> to bring the money before God. You decided to do it to get the fame and the glory that you gave money to God. But you are a hypocrite because you are not <coughs> bringing the full price. So you have to be upfront with God because God knows what you're thinking. He knows what you did yesterday. He knows what they're going to do tomorrow, even before you do it. So when you come down to God, be very open and be honest. <coughs> and great faith of all people. And by the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were wrought among the people. And believers were added to the Lord. They brought the sick to the streets, laid them on beds, and put a shadow passing by and healed them. And you see how strong the power of God is in the Peter. And his shadow was healing people. That was the beginning of the church. This is the same power you and I need in the world of today to convince the naysayers in the world that our God is the true God of heaven. We cannot afford to compromise. Our lives will be righteous. Unrighteousness will sold them to the death of Ananias and Sapphira. When your life is righteous, you have peace with God. And God will forbid your life and guide it. But when you try to hide and pretend to God, you will suffer a lot of consequences. May that not be our portion. But God has already warned us, and it's up to us. Tell the truth to be open to God, to be alive, not to be complacent, not to sit 
on our sites. We have to be fervent in the spiritual work of God. That means to constantly pray, fasting, hearing the word of God. Your spirit is connected to the spirit of God. But if you don't pray, you don't hear the word of God, you don't fast, you don't come to church, your spirit is dead. The spirit of God can only connect with your spirit when you two are the same frequency. This is why it's good to fast, because when you fast, your flesh is lowered and your spirit rises. Prayer is more powerful. See, for many people fast. Some of you think that fasting is a death sentence. No, it's not. It was fasting that Jesus used to overcome Satan in the wilderness. He didn't use any other powers. He didn't use his body powers. It was fasting that he used. Do you ever read the word of God? These are the things you need to be doing. To be perfect in spirit. So we've learned a lot today that God, we must live a in righteousness. Our God is a righteous God. And we rose and raised in righteousness. If you want to walk with Jesus, you want to come to Him, you have to have a righteous life. Meaning, you have to obey His commandments. You have to live your life according to the Word of God. Many of you live your lives according to what you watch on television, or read in the newspapers, or on social media. Read my lips. This is a big error because those things are instruments of the world, sort of Satan. You will not find the truth in them. Why? When you go to social media, when you go to television, what do you find? When all these things that God says are wrong, that's what they're preaching. All kinds of uh, legitimacy, morality, that's what the world's about. So if you live a life of that, you will definitely violate God's commandments. Rather, if you go to the word of God and read it, so you shall know the truth, and the truth that you know shall set you free. Many of you are bound today by the deception of the lies of Satan. You think, oh, it's okay to be this, okay to be that. When you are it's not okay. Now, if you're watching me and you don't know this man of righteousness, I know this is Christ personally. I have to go to church once in a while, praise mass. Easter, all this thing. You don't know him personally. He doesn't talk to you. You don't feel his presence. Then today is the day for you to join him in a relationship. How do you do that? You confess your sins. You admit your guilt and you ask him to forgive you and to come inside your life. That is how to be born again. Because if you're not born again, you cannot see the kingdom. You cannot see the kingdom of God by being good. Good people don't go to heaven. No. It's those who are born again that go to heaven. You can be very good and not come in heaven. Because your sins have not been forgiven. So if you are ready, let's say the simple prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I have sinned against God and man. I'm sorry for my sins. Have mercy on me today. Wash my sins away with the precious blood of the Lamb, then come inside my heart and begin to roll and reign over my life. Take my name from the book of the dead and I write my name in the book of life. And I promise to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That prayer, if you said it honestly and you believe it, a miracle will happen in your life. Amen. Mm-hmm. Because Jesus Christ he will cancel every sin you've committed from the day you were born till you said that prayer. That means if you are 60 years of age or 40 years of age, every sin against you written down is wiped away by instant of that prayer. So you become like a new one baby. It means you don't have any record of sin against you. See? So you feel very light because you are carrying that weight of that bag of sin down. You don't know what you are. Then you find that your life changes drastically. People will notice all those bad bad things used to do you who do them do. Fornicating, smoking, drug, all these things you are doing. You lose the thirst for them. Rather, you would like to read your Bible, you would like to be in church, you would like to fellowship with our Christians, and you're wondering. Why everybody else is not like you? 
I knew that when I was God saved, I sat down and I wrote to my brother for salvation. And by the time I finished, I had written 10 pages. I couldn't even believe it. And I sent it to him because I felt God, he should also experience what I was experiencing. The joy, I felt so happy. You will experience the same joy. Let us pray. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Michael, the God of the truth, the God of righteousness. We thank you once again for the words of Christ put on us. Let this word sink deep into our spirit today. Heavenly Father, the little people, deliver them from the deception and the error of Satan, from the lies of Satan. Give them the true spirit, and they will come to know you in truth and reality. Save them, save their souls, and use them for the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, please read these passages again, and the words will be ministered to you. And until we meet again, be in spirit, be fervent, God guide and guide you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.